point of order, Mr Speaker. Um, can I firstly begin by echoing your sentiments in relation to the debate that was had in this chamber in relation to the most important of matter, matters with regard to the safety of civilians in Gaza and indeed those in Israel. There has been a difference of view in the House today, but I think that difference of view has been expressed in a way which we can all agree has been in a positive fashion, in the best fitting way of any democracy, any functioning democracy. Mr Speaker, whilst I acknowledge your apology, the reality is that you were warned by the clerks of the House that your decision could lead to the SNP not having a vote on our very own Opposition Day. As a result, we have seen the SNP Opposition Day turn into a Labour Party yep. Opposition Day. I am afraid that that is treating myself and my colleagues in the Scottish National Party with complete and utter contempt. Yeah. And it, I will take significant convincing that your position is not now intolerable. Yeah. To respond to that, and quite rightly, I understand the feeling. As I said, I would like to have that conversation in private. I would like to meet with you as soon as possible. I am now going to leave it to continue. So, sorry, sorry. Point of order. No, come. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, can I just make a point of order that actually the, the amendment in the name of the Leader of the Opposition was this evening passed unanimously, um, and therefore... Yes, it was. And therefore... And therefore I don't think now is the time, and what I want to do, I want to move on and I want to meet with the important players. I'm now going to hand over to the deputy. I'm just going to leave it at that. Deputy. take one more point of order and then I really think we need to move on. Kit Malthouse. I am grateful, Madam Deputy Speaker. There are, there are two points on which I seek your clarification from what Mr Speaker has just said. The first is that he implied that the proceedings of this House were manipulated uh, with regard to outside intimidation. Um, yeah. that regard was given to things that were yes. said outside on social media <laughs> that were then reacted to within the House. And I think that's quite an important uh, Rubicon that's been crossed yes. and yeah. something that yes. may have been crossed without the consent of, of members. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to know where the processes of this House are likely to, to go, given the outside influences that may be brought to bear. And I'd be grateful for some clarification on that. The second issue is that I'm afraid, and as you know, Madam Deputy, we have the greatest respect for you, but bluntly you seem to have rammed through two divisions uh, that were quite important to quite a lot of members, in which no individual vote will have been recorded. And a number of us had quite thought quite carefully about how we were going to, going to vote in those divisions. Um, and we were essentially, forgive me, taken by surprise. Um, by those two divisions being rammed through. So I wondered if it would be possible to either void them or run them again. Um, I thank the right honourable gentleman for his point of order. Um, the fact is, I put the question, nobody called against it. <laughs> Jacob Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It was quite clear from the level of noise when the question was put that the view of the Deputy Speaker was being challenged. I think it is absolutely extraordinary that that, was, that noise level was deemed to be I. It is yes. inconceivable that yeah. anybody hearing it would have thought it was I. Right. And it is quite clear from right. all our standing orders, all our traditions, that when the Speaker or Deputy's decision is challenged, it should go to a division. Yeah. Well, I'm extremely sorry. Um, on, I took, on the voices, I was quite clear oh. where we were. Um, and the... Uh, the whole thing would have been considerably clearer if the government had not withdrawn at that position. Uh, point of order. 
consider how this looks to people outside. <laughs> Completely in order, it looks like chicanery. But I rise to ask a question on behalf of the small parties. What precedent has been set today in the way this opposition day has been handled? And how can we ever have faith in the future that our voices and our votes will actually be heard? Or will it be always the two big parties here? Well, I think the Honourable Lady has heard what Mr Speaker said, that he does intend to um, talk with people. I also understand that the... That the excuse me, I'm, I'm answering this chunk of order. Um, the, 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 the Honourable Gentleman must resume his seat. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I also know that the Chair of the Procedure Committee is going to be looking at some of the issues that have been raised as well at the request of the Speaker. And I think, at point of order, Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I wonder if I can uh, get your guidance on how I can make my views more known to my constituents. I was one of the first members of Parliament. Yes. I was one of the first yes. members of Parliament to call for the release of hostages combined with a permanent ceasefire. I lost my government job as a result of it. I was also, also because people misrepresented my uh, position, I, someone suggested on social media that they should show my wife a real man. Someone also suggested that they would attack me and my family. Already today, Labour councillors in my patch are tweeting that I have not supported a ceasefire. I wanted to vote with the Scottish National Party motion on a ceasefire. Can you advise how I can make my constituents clear of my views if I'm not able to vote on it? Well, I think the, I think the Honourable Gentleman has um, put his views on the record by what he's just said. Thank you. Uh, point of order, Alan Brown. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. On a point of order, is Mr Speaker going to explain how many Labour Opposition Day debates have taken place since October 7th, whereby no motion on a ceasefire was brought forward, and why Mr Speaker thought suddenly today in SNP Opposition Day that it was really important that a Labour amendment was taken when they had their own chance several times to bring forward a debate and a motion and a ceasefire in Gaza. Well, I, think the, um, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his point of order. He has, um, uh, Mr Speaker has said that he will be meeting with the leaders and the whips of the parties, and I'm sure that will be something that's... that's uh, point of order. Uh, point of order, sir. I, th I thank the Madam Deputy Speaker for this point of order and hearing all of our points of orders. I cannot be alone in this place today in being utterly embarrassed at how at how members have conducted themselves particularly on the government benches and i'm going to be continue to be shouted down by this as a perfect example on an issue so serious as we have heard today and i am asking for clarification madam deputy speaker because there are people within this chamber that clearly aren't aware of the rules and what's going on. One former leader of the House that made a complaint when he wasn't even in the chamber to hear what happened. But please, can Madam Deputy Speaker give us some clarity that should the Conservative Government not have withdrawn from the process today, we would have actually have had free votes. Um, I thank the Honourable Lady for that point of order. Um, I am quite clear, quite clear um, that there was the opportunity for three votes. Um, I would rather... I think the Honourable, the Honourable Gentleman may not know of all the discussions. I was very clear, I was very clear that there was the opportunity for... for, for yeah. Uh, I'll take one more point of order, Dr Caroline Johnson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. 
I'd be grateful if you could provide me with some clarity on procedure because you are a much more experienced Member of Parliament than I am on two points. The first point is my understanding is that Mr Speaker made his decision earlier today on the basis that there would be three votes rather than two. Once the Government had withdrawn its amendment and there were then two votes rather than three, was the decision to persist with the order um, of putting the Labour amendment before the SNP amendment the decision of yourself, Madam Deputy Speaker, or was it a decision of Mr Speaker? And the second question I've got is routinely, if, if, um, if a, a division occurs to sit, to sit in private in this case, that completes after 7 o'clock, as this one did, the motions would have fallen. Can she explain, please, why they did not? Uh, first of all, the, uh, uh, it's standing order uh, 31, which, is, with the, or, which ruled the order in which the votes were to be taken. And I said that very clearly in response to the um, Leader of the House, um, who also knew the, what the order of votes would be. So that was very clear. Um, uh, and also, um, once an amendment, with reference to it coming after seven, once an amendment is before the House, it does have to be decided. I can assure her, and I know she would expect me to do this, that I did seek proper advice, thorough advice, on both points. I hope that gives her some reassurance and she accepts that that was the case and that was the advice, because I certainly wouldn't do anything which, had got, which went against the order that I have said. Uh, I really am going to. I'm going to move on now. I'm afraid. We're going to move on. Uh, I'll, I'll, okay. I will take one more point of order from Marion Fellows. My point of order, Madam Deputy Speaker. Back in October. When the heinous actions of Hamas took place, as soon as I could afterwards, I called for a ceasefire. I have held firm to that belief since. My constituents have written to me in huge numbers telling me to vote for a ceasefire. I carry five proxy votes, and today I have not been allowed to vote either for myself or the five proxy votes I hold. How do I record, as the honourable gentleman opposite answered, how do I get how I would vote, which was for a ceasefire recorded in the House? Yeah. 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 Well, I think, the, as I have said, the, the honourable lady has made um, very clear what she would have done, and I am sure, and I'm sure that um, I'm sure that uh, she and all colleagues here will find ways to express that view.